5v1. So recently in the Diablo 4 livestream, Blizzard has previewed some of those new unique items that we are going to be able to find in Diablo 4 once we reach the in-game difficulties. So they have previewed a total of 8 of them. And earlier today, I went through them all and made a little write-up on them on Twitter in this thread here that I've linked in the description. And I figured I could also just talk through them in a little bit more detail in a video now. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to go through all of them one by one. And I'm going to give my impressions and my thoughts on each of them. Obviously, there are a lot more unique items that have not been officially previewed yet. Uh, that um, you also can you know take a look at with theta mines and stuff. But we don't really know if they are going to be in the game or if they are going to be like that in the game. So this is what we got for now. Either way, let's get started with the first one, the Shaco or Harlequin Crest. So this is probably the most powerful item that I have previewed here or probably one of the most powerful items in the entire game. In fact, as you can see here, it has two different effects. First, 20% flat damage reduction with a perfect roll, which is already better than some of those defensive items that you can put on, on a defensive slots like helm or chest or something like that for like a legendary power. So some of them are more in the range of like 15% and then even those might be conditional, like for example, you know, only from crowd controlled enemies or only when you're in werewolf form and these kind of things. So 20% damage reduction is actually really high and it works against everything all the time, which makes this a very, very strong effect. So I'm actually really impressed by how much damage reduction this item gives on its own. And I believe that damage reduction in general is going to be very, very important especially in the later end game difficulties, especially if you want to do a height nightmare dungeon pushing and these kind of things. I believe that uh, you really have to not <laughs> neglect defenses. And this is probably one of the most common mistakes that people will make, uh, you know, leading up the launch, trying to theory craft their own builds. I think that a lot of people are probably expecting the game to be too easy. And they're going to have a pretty uh, rough awakening at some point once they reach the higher levels. So keep in mind, build defenses. And this is like one of the best pieces in that regard anyway. It gives you the damage reduction and it gives you a good chunk of extra life here. See this here up to 1,359 life. I'm not sure exactly like how much life you're going to have. It's probably going to be in like the five digit range. So this can be somewhere between like five to 10% of your maximum life that you get on top. Uh, as an extra bonus so it can be pretty crazy as well and then it has cooldown and it has resource generation it bas basically every single build wants those two stats and they are pretty you know rare so cooldown reduction basically barely exists in Diablo 4 but it's extremely valuable because a lot of skills have rather long cooldowns and then being able to use them more often is obviously very good and the same with the resource generation so you, you just struggle of resources on most builds that use resources which is not everything but yeah very many actually try to at least get some resource cost reduction or resource generation or you know various legendary effects that boost their resources so this helps with that as well and all stats is obviously helpful but the real kicker here is actually the plus four to all stats the last line here on the bottom so uh, this is effectively not just a defensive item but also an offensive item and it just also buffs all of your utility skills on top of that. So in total, you have to see that this item gives you uh, potentially either 20 or 24 ranks of skills in total. So it's like 24 skill points. That's almost like, a, you know, 40% extra skill points or something like that compared to what you usually have. With the uh, 58 that you're going to have in total from leveling to 50 and getting all the renown. So for your main skill in particular, you're going to go from level 5 to level 9, or maybe go from like, you know, level 10 to level 14 or something like that, if you have some other items that boost it. But even in that case, it's still a noticeable damage buff of, you know, at least 15, 20, 25% for your main skill. And even more for other skills that you didn't fully invest into. Especially Sorcerer will have a lot of this, I guess, with, you know, those um, extra skills that you use only with unstable currents or with the enchant slots. Uh, or, for example, on rogues, you have the imbuements that will be like, massively buffed. You even buff some of those utility skills like dash or teleport that suddenly have like, you know, two seconds shorter cooldown just because you wear this helm. Uh, and then you get even more cooldown reduction from the stat. 
So it's just going to be like absolutely bonkers. And in some cases, I think this can actually lead to uh, some really broken stuff. I've already talked about this uh, in another video about barbarians being completely broken, overpowered in the end game. Uh, if you can get enough plus skill ranks. So there are those cases, for example, like Challenging Shout or Dark Shroud, where you have additively stacking damage reduction with each skill rank. And after reaching a high enough skill rank, which is actually not really so hard to get, I guess, uh, you're just become, gonna become invincible. You usually stack 100% damage reduction. So you don't even need this here anymore. <laughs> you just need a plus ranks to skills and potentially if this is not fixed, um, yeah, barbarians are just gonna be like permanent invincible. In any case, I don't think this was any coincidence that I have shown this unique and not any other random unique from the game uh, in this preview. This is most likely one of the craziest items and also probably one of the rarest or the rarest item I imagine because this is universally useful for literally every single build. Everyone wants to have this because you just can't beat this. Like you, 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 you straight up cannot beat this with anything. You cannot beat this with a legendary because yeah, you have only like utility and uh, defensive slots, I believe, on Helms. Uh, you can't even put offensive there. This gives you basically the same defense as the defensive slot. It gives you probably more utility than the utility slot. And it gives you damage on top of that. And it gives you good stats. So this is like the Helm for every build that does not need another unique Helm to work. Uh, there might, might be some of those cases where you have like a special effect that it can only have on the Helm from another unique and this makes your build, but if not, this is the one. But most people will probably not see it for a long time. Next up, we have the Mother's Embrace. So this is a ring that gives you resources back when you hit at least five targets with a core skill. So most builds will revolve around core skills, so this is not really such a uh, you know bad condition, but you have to hit five targets, which is actually quite a lot. So it's also kind of unclear if it's uh, refunding the base resource cost or the actual resource cost. So if you have resource cost reduction, which a lot of builds will at least stack a little bit, then yeah, this might just kind of like not really work as well. But if you actually get 40% of the base cost back, then you can probably quite easily achieve like, you know, infinite spamming of your abilities. So this is the one thing to consider. Realistically, I would expect it scales with the real cost after resource cost reduction is applied. So it's probably not going to be that crazy. And in general, I'm not really that impressed with this item. I think rings in particular are a really important source of crit chance. So you're going to try to have crit chance and crit damage on both of your rings most of the time. This one has crit damage, which is fine. It doesn't have crit chance. The stats are generally okay though, so it's maybe okay. You know, rings are the only slots where you can have uh, resource aspects. And some of them are definitely a lot more powerful than this effect, in my opinion. And it also doesn't work on bosses, so you have to kind of like solve your single target damage somehow uh, without really spending too much resources. So yeah, some builds can do that, where, for example, on uh, a landslide druid, you can stack up these terror mode charges, and then you just walk into the boss and you one-shot it with, you know, all your terror mode charges with landslides uh, proccing from your trample or something like that. Yeah, they can definitely combos like that which is builds that generally have really high single target damage, but you still need to have some other skill that also hits a lot of targets most of the time, like Pulverize or uh, Upheaval or something like that. So it seems kind of difficult to like balance out the single target versus the big AoE. And then very often you're also going to end up with like less than five targets. So yeah, I don't know. I think that for resource management, there are probably better options just from legendary effects in most cases, and I'm not really that impressed with Mother's Embrace. Next, we have Temerity. Those are some unique pants, and I think they're absolutely crazy. So they give you a barrier up to 80% of your maximum life for eight seconds, which is a rather short duration. But if you consistently heal up your character, potentially with the potion or with this proc, it actually has a proc here. It also gives you more potion drops, as you can see, more healing received. And uh, maybe some passive skills, for example, on the rogue, you have siphoning strikes for uh, many builds, so you can heal yourself by attacking with your core skills and critting. Uh, you can potentially stack up this barrier super quickly and even in between hits. So if you always have this barrier stacked to the maximum between every single hit that you take, or at least like the, you know, the, the big significant hits, 
then it's effectively 80% extra effective health pool. So this is really strong for a defensive item and pants are generally going to be one of those defensive slots. And again, as I mentioned earlier with the Harlequin Crest, uh, the, most of the defensive items are actually not really all that powerful. So they're like in the range of, let's say, 15, 20, 25% damage reduction. They give you like an effective, let's say, 30% more HP. And this one gives you 80 if you stack it. So I think this is definitely going to be one of the best choices for at least builds that have any kind of extra healing to build that barrier and then have like lots of damage reduction, especially against infrequent, really hard hits. So in like high nightmare dungeons, I expect this to be a really powerful choice. And not only that, but it also allows synergies with barriers. So for example, I think Sorcerer has like various passives that boost barriers or give you a boost by having a barrier. So this barrier can maybe be even bigger than that. You can uh, put in uh, gems in your armor sockets that uh, boost your barrier generation, I believe. So this 80% barrier might actually, you know, go even beyond 80% and like maybe might be 100 or 120 or something like that percent of your maximum life as extra barrier. And it also enables, for example, synergies with um, the legendary aspect, I don't remember the name right now, that gives you extra damage when you have a barrier up, especially for classes that usually don't really have barriers, like rogues, like barbs, usually don't really have barriers. But with this, you can have potentially, you know, some barrier at least almost all the time and benefit offensively from that as well. Next up, we have the Blood Artisan's Curious. So this is a very interesting item. So it uh, gives you three bone spirits dealing bonus damage based on your current life percent after picking up a certain amount of blood orbs. So you need five blood orbs with a perfect roll. And it also buffs bone spirit of extra ranks. I'm not sure if bone spirit is actually on the chest armor or you can get even more extra ranks for it uh, from another slot. It's not a core skill, so core skills are not gloves. But either way, um, it, it buffs the skill itself a little bit. It gives you extra damage after picking up a Blood Orb. Kind of interesting stat. Blood Orb healing, extra armor. So these stats are generally quite good. And then you can basically enable some combo between Blood Orbs or like a Blood Necro and a Bone Spirit Necro. And you have to see that this is a free Bone Spirit that does not cost anything, that doesn't deplete your resources like the typical Bone Spirit, I guess. And it also has, doesn't have a cooldown. So if you spawn enough blood orbs, I think this will be like absolutely crazy. Now, I'm not really sure how to spawn enough blood orbs to really like, you know, spam these bone spirits everywhere. But if you can get this like, you know, once every second or every few seconds or so, it could be potentially really devastating because bone spirit is going to be one of those uh, builds that doesn't really pop off at low levels in the beta. But I think that later on with enough investment, with, you know, enough, extra maximum essence and enough crit chance and all these kind of synergies that this skill has it's gonna like really pop off later on and if you can somehow get a lot of blood orbs in there then this, this can be like absolutely nuts i think and in general such a build will also just help the necromancers in general with their rather low mobility it can kind of just like you know walk pick up the orbs and then a bone spirit just fly off and, and just destroy stuff next to you while you're just like casually walking through the dungeon basically so that's kind of how i expect that to work and I think that such items are definitely really cool to have in the game. Like, they're really transformative. They're kind of like build enabling. And sometimes we have legendary sort of for kind of like the more generic concept. For example, a companion druid has like, you know, maybe two or three really important legendaries to, to make that kind of build work. But then you have those, you know, way more specialized builds. For example, here, a bone spirit blood orb combo where you have, probably have to put like many pieces together to really fine tune it and then it can really like go crazy and this is like you know the bone spirit blood orb like you know automatic bone spirit build basically so i'm really happy to see some of those and i also expect that for example these cases are not as rare as for example the shako that we saw at the start because they are kind of like you know so build defining so important to actually play a build and not necessarily super powerful for everyone Number five, here we have the Word of Hakan. So this is a bit of a similar case here, but for the rogues. So this one buffs Rain of Arrows and gives it all imbuements at once, at all times. So this means you don't even need to have imbuements on your bar or potentially even back into them, but maybe you do. Uh, you probably want to for the extra effects that you gain from the enhancements and the upgrades. 
but it means that you can use Reign of Arrows when all of your imbuents are either not on your bar or on cooldown and still get those effects on top of the effects that Reign of Arrows already brings and there are some other imbuing synergies. So there are, first of all, the non-physical damage buffs here and ultimate skill damage and crit damage with imbued skills and imbuement skill ranks. So there's a lot of really good stuff on this amulet that synergizes with this playstyle. And then Reign of Arrows itself actually has an upgrade that gives you, I think, 20% stronger imbuements with Reign of Arrows. And then there is another item that gives you another 40% multiplicatively more potency on your imbuements against vulnerable targets. So if you combine those effects, you can potentially have like almost like double effect imbuements uh, when you use this vein of arrows. And uh, then there's, you know, other synergies, for example, with uh, poison damage where you can like really mega buff your poison imbuement. And this will probably be like the, the real kicker here. Uh, so you have like the shadow imbuement that just takes care of all the small stuff, you know, AOE damage and stuff like that. You have like you know, these explosions like popping off everywhere. And then you have Poison Imbuement to actually deal the big damage against the Lates. Now, how realistic is this to actually become a build? I don't know exactly. So that depends on like how often you can use it. Right now, Reign of Arrows is like the one skill on the Rogue that I've basically never put into any Rogue build. So it just seems to be like the most useless thing to have because it's kind of slow, clunky, doesn't do that much damage, and it has a long cooldown. But if you can lower the cooldown enough, for example, with the Twisting Blades cooldown reduction or other sources of cooldown reduction, and you can use it like every 10 seconds, every 20 seconds or so, so maybe every one or two packs, uh, it could be really, really strong. So you just walk in, you press Rain of Arrows, and then while, you know, it's like raining down on the enemies, you walk in and you just do your thing. Everything is frozen, everything is crowd controlled, knocked down. You get a bunch of buffs from your passes, from your gliss, from your paragons, whatever. And yeah, just, you just have like this insane damage buff. And then you just really need to figure out some extra single target damage to deal with the bosses when you don't have the Rain of Arrows ready. So this is how I expect this to go. Definitely going to be quite exciting to try to build around this. But on the other hand, I would also love for Reign of Arrows to just be a bit more universally useful. For example, uh, I gave some feedback like that already in my other feedback video. Uh, I think that um, the Reign of Arrows knockdown effect could happen uh, faster, maybe on the first wave instead of the seconds, for example, just so that it has like, some more general utility. And maybe the cooldown could be a bit lower or so. But yeah, we'll see what you can do once you have the full set. Number six, here's the Gloves of the Illuminator. This is a Sorcerer Fireball Glove, which actually sounds pretty funny. So it makes fireballs bounce as they travel. So I guess there's like, you know, throwing on the ground and then, you know, jump, 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 jump. It doesn't say how often, but I guess, you know, quite often actually, because it's a significant damage nerf, you see here, up to 75% uh, or 65% less damage per explosion. So I would expect at least three, four, five bounces or so to kind of make this like a useful item. But again, like you, you probably don't need to have that much control over like what your fireball is actually doing. Like you just throw it into the pack and then it may or may not hit the same target multiple times, depending on how the bounces and the uh, like explosions overlap. Um, let's say maybe you get like two hits on average. So it would be still a bit less damage than just throwing a fireball. But again, it's it will go through the entire pack versus now the regular fireball just explodes on the first target. So maybe you will actually hit more of the pack. So it seems like in general, like a really huge AOE clearing uh, item. And you have to figure out some extra single target damage from somewhere else. There's the obvious choice, Hydra. But I think that Hydra alone is probably not enough to solve this issue. And realistically, I see this item intended for a non-burning damage fire sorcerer where you use maybe Hydra and then maybe throw Meteors or something like that and maybe have burning damage, not really like a primary source of damage, like uh, on, on like, you know, a firewall build, for example. So you, you want to do damage with the explosion after all. You want to do crits, you want to you know, just one-shot stuff, basically, and then somehow have some single target damage to finish the bosses. It could be quite interesting, but that really depends on how the fireballs behave, and I don't really see this as such a powerful choice. It's most likely only going to be good when you really need two enchantment slots for other users so that you, you, you really have to invest fully into single target damage there, basically. 
and not have fireball in the enchantment slot. And then I can see those gloves being quite useful. Number seven is a Druid Axe, the Waxing Jibbers. Um, this seems really powerful. So this is for Babel of Druids. It gives you stealth for two seconds when you kill something with Shred, which is like your main ability as a werewolf. And then breaking a stealth with an attack grants ambush, which gives you guaranteed crits for two and a half seconds. So this sounds like you're just going to have 100% crit chance all the time. Generally, probably not that crazy in the late game because you're probably going to have really close to 100% crit chance anyway. At least you are strongly incentivized to stack crit a lot on the wolf druid. And I would expect that you would actually try to get as close as possible to 100% anyway. But this can be very useful to just like mow through targets and uh, you know not really worry about applying all of your buffs and debuffs all the time. You just have consistent 100% crit and uh, then you just figure out your single target with you know lacerate and maybe some other effects and you should be just fine i guess so it sounds really strong especially just to like farm you know like you, you can actually jump from target to target with shred if you have enough resources this can be a very fast farming build i believe where you just like jump from target all the time to the next one and you have 100 percent guaranteed crit you know how much damage you're gonna do basically with every attack you can consistently one shot stuff and uh, I imagine this is going to be a really smooth, really good farming build down the line once you have this. And it's a one-handed weapon, so you have generally rather high attack speed of that to even make this better and uh, even faster. And you also have some pretty interesting stats on this thing. So you have the life on kill here uh, with um, a relatively good value, I suppose, uh, that will synergize with the temerity pants that I have previewed earlier with uh, the barrier that you gain from over here. So you can build your barrier as you go. You have damage to close enemies, which is always going to be the case when you are shred through it. Then you have the critical strike damage, which perfectly synergizes with this effect. And you have damage to injured enemies, so in case something actually survives a hit or two, you can just finish them more easily. So, kind of cool. And there's the damage to healthy enemies because it's an axe. So yeah, that seems like a nice choice for, to have, especially for like you know speed farming builds for Battle of Druids. And lastly, here comes Overkill. This is a barbarian weapon. So this is designed for death blow. Personally, I really like death blow. I think it's a really fun skill to use, but you can also kind of like easily get outscaled, I guess. And then death blow is just not really great. So that really depends on like how strong you are with your character right now. So death blow, the way that it works is that you have to finish a target and then it resets the cooldown. Otherwise you have to wait like 12 seconds or something like that to use it again. And it has yeah, mostly really high single target damage. Just go around and like one tap enemies one by one until eventually hit one and doesn't die and you have a cooldown and you have to do other stuff. So that's kind of how I play Death Blow. And now it gives you a shockwave that deals 30% of its base damage to enemies, um, which yeah might be able to crit and uh, kind of like just be like 30% uh, extra damage to everything, which is kind of nice. So it can kind of like soften up the bigger targets while dealing with the smaller targets. And you know, some stuff will just like randomly die from those shockwaves anyway. So it seems very nice when you're just like mowing through really low HP targets or like, you know, really easy content basically. But death blow in general is just really weak when you do difficult content. So this is kind of like the same case as before with the Werewolf Druid, where um, you just want to like speed farm easy stuff. Death blow also doesn't cost any resources. It actually can generate resources, which is really useful. So you can use that to just like, you know, kill all the small stuff and then you have like, let's say upheaval or something, just like, you know, throw on an elite and move on and then repeat at the same time. So I think this can be really nice to like smooth out the farming on such a death blow build. Definitely a must have if you want to really build around death blow. But I guess in most cases, we're going to have better choices on the barb. Uh, it does have relatively good stats here, especially with a lot of crit chance against injured enemies, as you can see here. So as long as you're not doing a whirlwind build, at least, you will need crit chance uh, for various sources, and this is definitely uh, pretty good. But outside of that, it doesn't really have great stats, in my opinion, here. So overpower damage, yeah, physical damage, yeah. These values are relatively high, but, you know, there are really powerful other stats, and there's also really powerful barbarian legendary effects for weapons, where... If you don't fully invest and like rely on the death blow, then it's probably kind of a wasted slot in a two-handed weapon slot that you only have two of. So I really want to be careful what you put there. 
In any case, that's it for my review of these items. So some of them are insanely powerful and like this one here, and some of them are, you know, very niche or kind of like, you know, build enabling. And that is also fine. I'm quite excited to see this variety in the items and obviously how it's all going to play out once you get to play with all of them. There's going to be a lot of really crazy stuff that we're going to find over time and then, you know, eventually going to introduce even more items and these kind of things. I'm just mildly worried that um, especially some of those build enabling items, you know, like the Bone Spirit one or, uh, you know, this Word of Hakan, you know, maybe someone really wants to play that build, you know, because they have seen my, my build guide or whatever, and then they will never be able to find us. And it seems like there's not really a way to target farm uniques besides just grinding. You can't gamble them uh, as far as I know. You can't really get them from any source. So it's just like kind of like a random drop. And I really hope that at least in the long run, we will get some form of target farming for at least some of those items, especially those, you know, build defining ones like this one. Like those, you know, something like this is just like too generic to be needed, I'd say, as like a target farmable item. Uh, it, you know, no one needs this item basically, but it's just nice to have and this is okay. But yeah, some of them, you know, if you want to play a certain build and you can't, that will feel really bad. So I hope that at least we're going to get some solution down the line for that. In any case, hope you like this format and let me know what you thought about those. Let me know what you thought about my assessment of these items as well. If you like have some crazy ideas for some of those builds or some of those items, how they can be used. Um, let me know. Maybe I missed some stuff. And as always, thanks for watching. Hope you like this one and see you guys next time.